Hello, my zebras and spoonies. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me today. I am glad that you are here. Today, I'm going to be talking about willpower and how it is just another one of the metaphorical spoons that we carry around. Well, we probably get more than one, but you get the idea. Generally speaking, willpower is the control exerted to do something or restrain impulses. And that's the definition from uh, the Oxford, Oxford Dictionary. Um, in many ways, this is a defining feature of humanity. It is something that we are much more capable of than other animals, yet most people will report that they feel that they lack adequate willpower. First, it is important to understand that willpower drives our ability to suppress impulsive behaviors, make choices, and sustain focus. This is something that those of us with ADHD often feel we are greatly lacking in because we are impulsive, have difficulty with choices, and difficulty sustaining focus. The good news is that no matter what level your willpower is at, there are things that you can do to improve it. Just like any other brain activity, the more that you engage in the skill, the more the brain will dedicate neurons and neural pathways to improving upon that skill. Willpower is no different. So if you practice it, you're going to get better at it over time. But just like anything that we practice, like learning an instrument or riding a bike or doing art, it's not a fast process. It's something that takes time. But it is different than learning how to ride a bike because it is kind of like having a, a battery or spoons. When you start your day, you get a finite amount of it. And once you've used it up, um, you have to go through the process of recharging that battery before you can expend that energy again. And this is different than riding a bike. Um, you don't get bike spoons. <laughs> like every energy that we produce, there is a metabolic cost to produce it. And this is why it's finite. And just like every other energy that we produce, we can have times that we are not able to make as much of it because our bodies had a high metabolic demand elsewhere, and those resources are no longer available to make the required energy. And this is why people experience decision fatigue and why they find decision making more difficult when you are stressed or tired. It's the same for suppressing impulsive behaviors and for staying focused. So the thing about willpower is that it is always about making a choice. When we're suppressing an impulsive behavior, we're making the choice to not follow that impulse, but you know, to not give in to the urge, but to do something different, to do something that isn't our inherent pathway, and it isn't our um, behavioral routine or pattern. Uh, when we're maintaining our focus, we are in reality making the choice to stay on task and then making the choice to come back to the task every time we are distracted or tempted to stray away. So it's a decision to continuously redirect yourself when things are trying to interrupt or disrupt that focus. Focus is the repeated choice to continue with the task. Willpower is really about having the energy to make those choices. And this might seem like a weird thing to spend so much time on, but I really feel like it's important that willpower is, is about choices. Um, when we're looking at improving our willpower, there are three ways that we can go about it. And the first is to engage in exercises that help us improve the amount of willpower that we have available. The second is to avoid using willpower on trivial matters, but instead only spending it where it matters. So being conscientious of those spoons. And the last way is about refilling that battery and restoring that willpower. So how do you go about doing those things? Okay, let's look at each of them. So willpower can improve with practice. Engaging in the active choice to do something that is different than is your impulse. It's about making your brain shift gears and do something that you normally wouldn't. So pick one thing and focus on that as your exercise until that thing becomes a new habit. Then pick something else. Uh, you can fix your posture every time you think about it until you reach the point that you no longer slouch. Uh, you can use your offhand rather than your dominant hand uh, to open the door until that becomes a habit. 
Engaging in these kinds of small choices about repressing the impulsive habit brain and forcing our brain to change to another way of doing things. Since it's something for practice, you should pick something that isn't emotionally charged. Uh, you can work on those things once you've gotten willpower built up. So do these exercises on days when you don't have things going on or when you're not feeling intensely stressed. These exercises are going to use up your willpower. So you don't want to engage in these exercises on days that you're going to need that willpower for something else. So do them on a baseline or average kind of day. Um, the next way that you can increase the amount of willpower available is by being more mindful of how you're spending it. Just like any of our spoons, it is important to consider how and when we're spending them so we get the most out of those spoons. Making anything routine and choice-free that can be will make more willpower available for you to use on other more important stuff. And this is why people find habits so comforting and why it is so stressful when someone interrupts or disrupts their routine or habit unexpectedly. There's a metabolic cost to breaking our routines and habits, and that's why changing our habits is so hard. But being mindful of the way that you set up your routines and habits can go a long way to improving the amount of, of, of willpower available to us. So limit the number of choices that you need to make when you're getting ready for your day. Uh, this is why wearing the same kind of clothing every day is a habit that many people develop. It makes for one less thing to choose at the start of the day. So yeah, there's benefit to having the same coffee and the same breakfast every day. Save your choices for things that matter. But being mindful of your routine and habits uh, means making sure that they are healthy routines and habits. If you're going to be eating the same breakfast every day, you want to be sure that it is one that's going to be nutritionally sound and one that's going to be good for you, that's going to be healthy. The other way that you can reduce the number of choices that you're making is by having other people make choices for you. So if you're going to go this route, it is important that you talk to the other person beforehand so that they are aware of what you're doing. After all, you're going to be asking them to basically give you some of their willpower. Um, it can be as simple as having someone else laying out your clothing for the day or deciding what you will eat when you go to a restaurant. This can be a way to save energy when you go out with friends. So you can tell your friends that making choices for you will save you spoons and allow you to do more while you're out or stay out longer. Or it might be what makes it so that you can go out in the first place. Um, this can be a very powerful option to use when you're feeling low on spoons or you're feeling overly stressed. So just like with everything else in life, don't be afraid to ask for help. Just make sure that the person that you're asking help from, A, has the spoons to give, and B, is someone that you trust is going to make good decisions for you. The last thing that you can do to make sure that you have willpower available is to make sure that you're recharging that willpower battery. And believe me, I know that this is easier said than done. But seriously, taking care of yourself is going to help generate more willpower. Make sure that you're getting proper nutrition and that you're getting good sleep because research shows that these two things go a long way in restoring someone's willpower. Those of us with chronic illness will also need to be doing what we can to manage our symptoms. If we're in a flare, that's going to have a metabolic cost, which will mean that there will be less resources available for everything else, including willpower. This is why brain fog is such a common thing for us. We will use the resources for other things, and then there isn't anything left for braining. So remember that your willpower is another spoon. It is a super important ability to have available to us if we want to be successful. Because it is so important, I think that it should be considered the golden spoon. After all, a lot of really important things depend on us having the willpower to spend. You need to make a doctor's appointment? Gotta have the willpower to do it. You need to focus during a lecture or meeting? That's gonna take willpower. Gotta get out of bed today? Yeah, willpower. Every choice that we make comes back to having that willpower. If we want to be making good choices, we need to have the willpower available to do it. Otherwise, we're going to fall back on impulses and habits because that is what our brain does 
on autopilot. Our autopilot brain, by definition, is what builds our habits. And just like every other spoon, the gold spoon is going to be variable. There is nothing that you can do to prevent this because there are way too many variables that factor into this to get it the same every day. That means that there are going to be days that are good and there are going to be days that are bad, just like with everything else in the world of chronic illness. I mean, just everything in the world, period. Um, that means that you're going to have decision fatigue some days. It's going to happen. When those moments come, you're going to fall back onto your habits and routines. And this is another reason that it is so important to make sure that we are mindful about what habits and routines we are creating. Because we want to make sure that that safety net that our brains use, you know, those habits and routines, is actually safe and is going to help us. In the end, it will be our habits and routines that will decide if we are successful. Because when you have chronic illness, the low spoon days come on a pretty regular basis. So once you've got your willpower built up and you've strengthened your, your skill set with practice, you can start to take on the things that really matter. That means taking a close look at those daily habits and routines. Ask yourself if each step in your routine is helpful or hurtful or even necessary. Ask the same about your habits. Choose one thing at a time to focus on for change. This means making improvements in little baby steps, but over time, you can mindfully create a set of daily habits and routines that really will serve as that healthy safety net that you need when the golden spoon isn't available. So that's about it for my rambling today. Thanks for coming and spending time with me. If you like the video, please click the like button. It does help. And until we talk again, you guys take care of yourselves. Bye.